Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Podar. Now, the equity markets in India have shown immense resilience despite the weak macro data globally and has opened a window of opportunity for many equity deals on the bourses. In fact, uh, private equity-led block deals in particular have been the trend in recent times. But what does this really mean for the broader equity market deals and are these sustainable levels? Let's find out from our team of experts joining us on the show, Vivek Gupta of KPMG India and Salil Pitle of Axis Capital. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for joining us. Uh, now, both of you are deal makers, have the pulse of the market. Salil, let me begin uh, with you what's your view on the deal street with this equity market up you know window really presenting itself has this really infused confidence for more transactions while the deal flow has been on a slow lane no i think uh, i think so nisha uh, markets uh, the deal street uh, is coming off a, a few months seven eight months of very tough periods wherein we would have seen that, you know, there's been a lot of FIF capital flow out of the country. Uh, it's reversed in the last month or so. And uh, the quality of the names that are coming in is also telling us that, you know, it's some good quality set who are participating in the deal activity. Uh, the domestics have always been there, uh, who, who held forward in the last eight months when the FIs were in the same mode. So I think uh, both the fact that, you know, foreign money and good long, long only quality money coming in, uh, domestics holding forth, retail h &I looking stronger means that I think deal activity, at least right now, is definitely there. It is, uh, uh, it has to be carefully calibrated. It's not that every, every deal goes through. People are looking at, you know, valuations in the current context and not necessarily the euphoric valuations in some cases earlier on. Uh, but one would tend to believe that, you know, there is, uh, there is a fair amount of action on the ground. Yes. We as bankers uh, are engaged with a lot of players right now to see which of them hit the markets. And uh, you would have seen in the recent past, uh, there's a fair amount of block deal activity. Uh, there's some activity on the QIP side. There have been three, four IPOs which have gone through. There's some of these stuff uh, still lined up. So yes. we are quite enthused. We think this is a market window which has opened up. Uh, there would be still some deal opportunities which will still go ahead. That's right. For corporate finance, also for the companies, uh, it is providing a lifeline in an interest rate hardening scenario. But Vivek, let me get you into the discussion. What is the kind of action on the ground that you're viewing? And do you think this momentum is sustainable? So look, there are two parts to this. Hmm. Uh, I completely agree with Sal to say that the last month has been very different from the scene, let's say, from November of last year. So from November of last year, there was a very uh, discernible change in the markets in that companies that were earlier uh, thinking of IPO plans had to either defer or shelf their IPO plans just because the market was not supportive. The last month has seen market activity. I also agree with you at the top of the show, you made the comment to say a lot of big, a lot of secondaries uh, have happened, particularly on stocks that were coming out of their lock-ins and so on and so forth. Quality names have come in. So that part... I definitely see as positive. Will I interpret this to say, though, that primary market is back? It depends on how you define it. Quality assets uh, at reasonable valuations, certainly primary market is back. Uh, however, in a scenario where money is not going to be globally as easy as it was, let's say, during the COVID times when, they, when really the monetary policies meant that money flow was very easy. I do think that the scope of the equity market window will be more calibrated. Uh, investors will be more careful. And the kind of assets that will be able to access the primary markets, at least, uh, they will need to show, uh, let's say, a higher threshold than we were seeing in, in let's say, the last two years. So okay. I'm, I'm optimistic, hmm. though cautiously so. All right. So one point I'll make is uh, that a lot of deals had gone out of the market also because of the froth and the impending headwinds on the macro side. So Salil, uh, you know, valuations have a big role to play in deal making and uh, you can reflect and uh, throw more light on that particular bit. Uh, some froth was out of the market. Now we are again seeing enough volatility. Instead of saying euphoria, I would say call it volatility because uh, it is still tentative on a daily day-to-day -day basis. 
how do you put together all these factors fitting in for the future trend of deal flow? So, uh, so let's put it this way. Uh, from the valuations point of view, uh, you know, the, the world has changed. Uh, and therefore, you know, price points and uh, market multiples have changed. What they were, let's say, you know, nine, 10 months, 10, 12 months down the behind us versus now are different. Uh, the sectors which could be of interest also change a little bit in this. Uh, you mentioned about froth. Uh, yeah, I think there was, you know, there was a concern that a lot of, you know, especially tech related areas wherein, you know, uh, valuations seem to be pretty large at that point of time. They were then reflective of what global markets were looking at, uh, especially NASDAQ and the likes. There's been serious correction out there, you know, so that correction is not lost on India too. And, you know, for, you know, some of the tech related companies, that correction is reflected in traded prices today, as well as increased interest, if at all. The type of interest has changed. Let's say in tech side, what we do perceive now is, uh, is a lot more focus on even within the tech, the quality names with either profitability or a decent path to profitability. Those are of sure interest. Uh, among the other sectors, there's a whole set of sectors which have also started becoming you know, important beneficiaries in the marketplace today. Uh, and the whole manufacturing related area is, is of tremendous interest. Uh, and there people are willing to pay strong price points because right. they see that the runway for growth is very good. So I would think, you know, valuations, the froth on tech hmm. reduced yes. uh, a lot of discerning stuff. Yes. Uh, but I think uh, the, the interest is, you know, it is, is goes into stuff like manufacturing, a lot of financials, uh, electronic design, chemicals, you know, those are the areas which are seeing good quality interest now. All right. So those are the sectors which are more in vogue right now. Now, Vivek, uh, Salil mentioned about uh, the startup IPOs and uh, the valuations and the deal uh, making there. Do you think that uh, the equity markets in this tentative phase is going to give another chance to start up IPOs at all, uh, even if valuations have come down? And in the promoter founder mindset, have the valuations really dipped now? Okay, so two points to make. A, I think access to global, uh, globally as interest rates harden, uh, access of the equity markets to more pools of capital goes down because capital flows into other asset classes. So that is one thing to bear in mind. Two, that having been said, I wouldn't call it so much the startup versus the non-startup community. I would simply say the bar for proving yourself to be a worthy candidate on the exchange has gone up. In other words, earlier the market was willing to see you as a good story a uh, path to profitability of five years, seven years, six years, four years. We've heard all kinds of stories. And so long as you had a large share of the market, that was acceptable. I do think that the market has fundamentally altered and the current market will now perhaps not believe so much. They will want to see a shorter term or at least a medium term path to profitability as a very inherent factor before according a chance to what you call a startup uh, for an IPO. Right. So the traditional sectors, of course, but in the new age sectors, hmm. a sounder business model couple, as demonstrated by an immediate part to profitability or a closer part to profitability, I think will be the, will be the definition of what the market is willing to accept. Right. Uh, path to profitability is something that we have been harping on again and again. And in the equity market euphoria that we saw last year, same time, Salil, a lot of things got passed very easily. But now it, the investors have also learned their lessons. The founders have also understood uh, the public market to some extent. Another important event and milestone in the life cycle of some of these startups and unicorns which made it to the IPO market are the lock-ins getting over. We saw the entire case pan out with Zomato. From that experience and looking into Policy Bazaar as well as Paytm coming up in the next two months, what is your view on the acceptance and how it will go through and in terms of investor mindset and acceptability at these rates? So uh, so I agree with you, Nisha, that you know, uh, the opening up of the lock-in, the statutory lock-in is an event which is an important event. Uh, and, you know, companies need to you know, prepare for that. Uh, it's not just uh, in, in these, in a lot of such companies, 
shareholders are a fairly diverse set of shareholders. You know, they could be different private equity shareholders with different investment time horizons themselves. So each one may potentially have a different way of looking at it, different entry price points and so on. Uh, so it becomes trickier. Uh, having said that, we've also seen that the markets uh, have in some of these companies which have had stock coming out of lock-in, taken the lock-in stocks in their stride. You know, we had uh, Sona Comstar coming out, uh, you know, certain blocks happened in that. Uh, uh, I mean, even at a much larger name, somebody like an HDFC Life, where, you know, Standard Life is a large shareholder. Uh, they have, you know, uh, consistently sold blocks. Uh, it's just that the interest in the name and the price point will matter. Hmm. Uh, it's not just to do with the fact that, you know, I have a date on which lock-in opens up hmm. and therefore there has to be immense selling pressure. Uh, the holders themselves, which is typically institutional holders, including private equity themselves, are uh, also aware that you know, uh, a, any any lock ins, any such blocks need to be nicely placed, which means that you know some some amount of you know uh, discovery on potential bias has to happen, uh, and therefore the stock gets placed in a calibrated manner rather than you know it just gets sold on the screen. You know, mm -hmm. sold on the screen is where destruction happens. If it's a calibrated buying, which is you know organized. You know the the markets take it in its stride. However, as I said, you know it will vary case to case. It will completely be dependent on you know how incoming investors see that specific opportunity. And there are enough cases wherein if the opportunities seem to be pretty good, the stocks have been resilient even though the lock-in stock has come into the marketplace. All right, and I'll pick your brain more on the investor mindset and the kind of investors that we've seen in the past few months, Salil. But we'll slip into a short breather on Big Deal at this point. We'll continue the conversation on ECM market window and how the deal street is going to look like uh, going forward. Stay tuned to Big Deal. Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the equity market deal flow. Now, uh, Vivek, uh, we have really looked at REITs and INVITs as an instrument, uh, you know, and uh, an important uh, aspect of the equity markets also since the inception. It has evolved. And do you think that in the interest uh, hardening scenario with its combination of both being fixed and equity component in terms of returns to the investors that is going to be much more emphatic and play a larger role in the system and in for for investments uh, do you see that already picking up so look in the context of the indian market i think reits and invits is is something that is just meaningfully starting out just the fact that we have so much of a gap in terms of accessing REIT and WIT capital uh, for a country which has a lot of REITable, invitable assets, if I can call them that, means that uh, I think there will be a huge window of opportunity for REITs and invits going forward. Uh, bear in mind, uh, it is a slightly different class of capital, as, as you uh, very rightly stated, which can flow into REITs and invits. Uh, you have sovereign funds, you have more patient capital, you have more annuity returns type capital, which happily flows into these instruments. The government has been very proactive, I must say, in terms of devising a regulatory regime. And after having devised the regulatory regime, refining it constantly based on market feedback. And I therefore feel that REITs and INVITS is, is something that will very, very meaningfully pick up in the context of the Indian market in the short term itself. So, yes, I'm very uh, optimistic, much more optimistic on the REITs and INVITS window uh, as things pan out in the short term. Right. And Vivek, uh, you know, even tax experts like yourself have done enough, worked enough with the government to make it a more acceptable instrument. So, Salil, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the, the tax benefits have really gone to the public uh, REITs and WITs as well as the private ones as well. Where are you seeing most amount of traction? What kind of investors and what is the on-ground pipeline looking like? So, Nicha, we are really enthused about the, both these products. Yes. They're relatively, as Vivek said, relatively new to the Indian markets. But I think the regulators have done a fantastic job to, you know, uh, allow us to get them to the markets in a nice manner. 
uh, a, the first set of invites found the going difficult because you know people probably did not be sure where to keep these assets as whether they're you know uh, in which books you know the equity books the debt books or the balance books and so on but i think people have you know found their own calling around it uh, the number of investor interest that we've seen in invites has just gone through the roof uh, people are interested both in listed uh, uh, public listed and private listed too uh, even in the private listed category we see a lot of you know hni as well as you know the iif kind of interest coming in apart from the you know the large people who are wanting to take positions uh, reits is a classic category which you know plays gives you yield but also gives you upside and capital appreciation coming out of you know the underlying properties going up now uh, indians play inherently do play for capital appreciation in the real estate market in a massive manner so you know so the reits have given them the benefit of both an yield plus a cap upside so i think both these categories are seeing both institutional interest within which you know institutional uh, private uh, as well as institutional public market now and i would say the high net worth or the retail hni category which is you know the large ticket uh, uh, investors so when they willing to take positions in this there's a lot to happen as we very nicely put it across there are enough retable or invitable asset categories which are there in the markets in india today uh, we just seen you know tip of the iceberg the easy ones you know the 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 transmission based ones as well as you know the commercial office space based reits those are the starting point ones and there are quite a few more who may want to tap into this and you know there will be different categories within this also that will come up you know the warehouses and the likes or also you know by their inherent nature either invitable or retable assets so that will come up uh, we we would expect a lot of action on both of these That's all right so a lot of action really invest uh, uh, expected in reits and invit side and it is a very uh, uh, you know unique uh, proposition in terms of um the capital intensive sectors also raising capital at a cheaper cost uh, so definitely an important aspect but vivek uh, i want to understand uh, that where is the momentum according to you which sectors are you spending more time on and which kind of products are you spending time on and which factors will define whether whether or not deal flow is going to continue with the momentum it's seeing in the equity markets so uh, now on equity markets or or within reits and invits no equity market at large look uh, i think equity market at large salil um, salil ka covered the sectors very nicely i would say only one thing if companies are fundamentally strong and they have let's say a more visible business model those companies are the companies that will be welcomed by the primary markets if companies have a slightly longer term uh pathway to uh to more visibility in their business model or to more visibility towards uh profitable cash flows then i think those sectors will will struggle so technology uh, uh tech services for example pharma uh these sectors are or or all the traditional sectors these sectors i think will continue to be strong so strong players in the sector will find it relatively easy uh, to hit the primary markets bfsi should see uh, a fair bit of activity uh, we've seen some control deals happening already in the private equity space i think um, time is right when some of those candidates will then come up for uh, for listing on the public markets right. so from a public market standpoint i think it's less about sectors more about the kind of company and the attributes of the company that is going to be able to be successful uh, on the primary markets right and uh, salil uh, even finance minister of the country has made a point that capital markets should be used more for uh, growth capital now so far the blocks are of the nature of private equity getting a window of opportunity at uh, decent valuations to exit from their holdings how do you see this momentum in terms of fundraising for growth capital by the companies i think uh, uh, blocks obviously are secondary market so they will be you know monetization for somebody and an entry for someone else that's the nature of blocks uh, but we do see uh, a capital raise which is fresh capital for growth coming in the form of both qips as well as in the form of uh, ipos uh, and there will be obviously certain sectors which will be able to absorb this better Uh, our sense is uh, the whole manufacturing space in india which is you know 
the government initiatives, PLI uh, and others, ensure that this is a sector, these uh, manufacturing sectors generally are of serious interest and can take amount of capital infusion too. Uh, companies in the electronic uh, design and manufacturing space, people who are into the defense spaces, uh, even you know companies into the chemical spaces who are having expansion plans and so on, general capital goods in general. Uh, so you know, those are areas wherein uh, primary markets could be used and will be used as a vehicle for raising some amount of capital. We're also seeing uh, the amount of uh, onus that the government has put on infrastructure yes. means that uh, there is, uh, and we've seen this, you know, seeing the amount of stuff that has happened on the roadside and so on and so forth, means that companies in the infra space, some of them would also need to raise capital. And, you know, we, we would think that that will also go towards some of the capital formation that is there. Uh, so I think these are where capital get gets uh, built out of the public platforms. We should also not forget, Nisha, that uh, some of the onus of you know funding growth yes. also has been taken by private equity in the past. Yes, uh, the risks of growth and capital formation has been taken in by P in the past. And it's nothing to frown upon to say that if some of them now use this window to as an opportunity to uh, to to monetize, it's the risk has been taken by private equity. Now it's getting it's well built, and now it is distributed to public. So, so point well, well taken, uh, Salil. That uh, of course, if they don't make that those exits and don't get the returns, then why will they invest? Uh, so, so proof of that investment is in, and they can in the back. returns. They can but I want to ask you one thing, which is a very significant factor to note: is that is private equity looking at investing at these levels? Uh, so you differentiate the uh, Nisha between private equity investing in markets and outside. You know, uh, today, and it's still just about a month's data point, so it'll be very difficult to, you know, uh, uh, you know, draw full inferences out of it. Uh, right now, the month's data point, you would see blocks which are sell side from private equity, but buy side from, you know, a larger, broader spectrum of market participants, whether it is long only foreign funds as well as domestic funds. Right. The private equities run their private equity business too, right? Which is wherein they have they, they've raised capital, which is growth capital, which is getting right. deployed. New right. opportunity. And that investment is happening. So, so Salil, uh, running completely out of time, point taken, but that will be one factor that I'll be judging the market when the valuations for because small ticket investments by financial institutions when sold by private equity is a very uh, small commitment uh, of capital uh, to that particular asset, while private equity takes much more risk with a higher ticket size. And if they come and invest at these levels, that is a real show of these valuation sustain. But thank Thank you so much both Vivek as well as Salil for giving us so many highlights. REITs and INVITs are going to be in action and some of the ECM deals and IPO window to some extent has opened, not so much probably for the startup industry. With that, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for tuning in.